All right, let's look at this this goofy Raw show here. So our our uh, our worst uh, whatever came true. We have Charlotte, Nia, and Shayna versus Mandy, Data, and Asuka. And who appears in the middle of this match but Asuka, uh, uh, Alexa Bliss, and her stupid doll? I was done with this show 15 minutes in. And she watches the match, and then she uses her magic to cause, of all people, Shayna Baszler's leg to not work Naturally. anymore. of course. And Shayna. Shayna falls down, and she gets beaten, and Alexa laughs. And all of these women, Charlotte, Nia, Shayna... Mandy, Dana, and Oscar have to sit in the ring and look at Alexa Bliss on the ramp, who's the star of the women's division now, and she's going to be using her magic and her stupid doll. And boy, brother, let me tell you something. If you hated this, if you hated this, just you wait. God, I wish. Do you I remember, could've... by the way, just to do one more Star Wars analogy? You remember oh, in the Empire Jesus. Strikes Back when Luke no. is is uh, there and he tells Yoda. I'm not afraid. What does Yoda say? He says, you will be. So if you're not afraid of where this is going now, in the words of the wise old Yoda, you will be. What a disaster this was. Wish I could have seen into the future when I interviewed Shayna Baszler on this very program. You weren't here one day, and she was on, and we were talking and you know, training with Josh Barnett, training with Billy Robinson. I wonder if Billy Robinson ever would have gotten her ready to be placed under a spell and do the shaky leg. I would call it the uh, the shanky leg, but we may have a no, guy No, we already have a on. shanky. Yes, we got a shanky, which yes, that we... may have been the best part of the show. We're getting ahead of ourselves, named, Mike. Please. Yeah, do name shanky. That was maybe the only good part of the show mvp folks mvp if you didn't see this show misspoke during a promo you know things can't be good if mvp usually one of the only saving graces of this program even he is messing up on his promos you know it wasn't a good night for this i'm not place. even bothering with all of that i'm just going to get to the point mm. we had uh, the return of jinder mahal he's uh these bollywood boys have put on some size and now the 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 little one the husky one is named Veer, Veer, and the lanky one is Shanky. Veer lanky Shanky. shanky. <laughs> I mean, that couldn't be. It couldn't be worse. What was the? Uh, I gotta find. There's a Chelsea Ooh. Green interview. Remember Chelsea Green showed up and got an injury, and we never saw her again. Yeah. So, w- am I wrong, or did they not call her Chelsea Green when she came out? Didn't they call her Chelsea Green? Uh, I thought she was because she did an interview, Chelsea. and they told her that her new name was like victorious or something it was like it was so stupid that she admits that when she first heard it she laughed and then the person that told her was like i'm serious your name is victorious or whatever it is and i'm like oh my god it's 2021 dude why are you calling someone victorious right they have a whole they have a whole roster of people that are like they're adult children like the show is filled with adult children braun is is looked at as a schoolyard bully who's not real bright. John Morrison is the dumbest jock stereotype moron you've ever seen in your life. Jackson Riker, I don't even know what he is. He's just some I, slow dude that likes music now. I, I have no idea. Alexa's got a doll. Matt Riddle is, you know, Spicoli Light. Asuka is, you know, at times can be incredibly entertaining, but they rely on that where she's just some goofball, manic woman child, too. It's just, I I don't know. I don't know. I got to find this. What do you want out of this show? I got to find this. I'll I'll get it here in a minute. But anyway, we had, uh, yeah, the return of Jinder. He beat Jeff Hardy, just squashed him like a prelim guy. Uh, we had Randy Orton, New Day, and Matt Riddle versus AJ almost, and then Riker and Drifter, and Orton pins Elias, and then he lays out both of the New Day with RKO's, which Riddle's upset about. I, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, bro, how can I have any friends if you keep? How can we have any friends? Was it we? Yes. <laughs> Riddle, by the way, has gotten papers dumb. so that they can officially be a tag team because you need papers. What did he roll up in them? Not those kind of papers. There's Mike, you don't seem to understand. You're making a joke, but what they actually said is an even bigger joke. He said that he had registration papers. Registration papers to make sure that him and Randy Orton become a registered tag team in WWE. Bro, this, this play's been around since 1963. I've been watching since 1988. 
I didn't know until today that you have to have registration papers to become an actual tag team in WWE. But you do. So that's nice. The Sheamus Umberto Carrillo thing happened. Uh, Shelton Benjamin beat Cedric because, of course, he did. Why wouldn't I have, he? I have one thing to say about this, and it is, I know... I know Cedric could easily end up on main event tomorrow or whenever main event airs and and Shelton could just disappear. But if this is the old uncle who, you know, keeps getting bucked up on by the kid at the barbecue and then just, you know, gets pushed around a little bit and then explodes up off the lawn and picks up and slams this kid and, you know, you better chill out for the rest of this thing, then that's fine. And, and Cedric coming back on him, learning some respect, and either reforming the team or getting the victory is fine. So if this is the a start to a story, that would be nice. Uh, but it's hard to look for the silver lining, so it will probably go the other way. But that's the only saving grace I could have in this. And the fact that Cedric and Shelton, at least if given any time, could actually have some good matches, and I would rather see them paired with each other than playing the fool and chasing around the 24-7 title or something like that. If you got any hope for the future of Cedric Alexander after I don't have any hope match. for this show, Brian, but we have to review it. So it's like I have to watch this and try to take a show seriously that started with Lily and Alexa coming out to interfere with a match where all of these women all overshadow the women's champion who you still really haven't established on the brand. And then you just go through every single part of this show. And it's like if you don't have some random hope for something – what is the point of really watching it then? It's much like my you're job. complaining about AEW. That's literally the only reason I watch the show. That. It's my I job. I know, but as part of the job, you actually have to look and see maybe there's going to be something. Yes, you could always look for the worst, but... Well, no, I, what I do is when I analyze it, I've watched this program for like a hundred years. I look at it and I try to, uh, like, what is likely to happen because of this based on what I've watched for 100 years? Well, what's likely to happen is I ain't ever going to see Cedric again. He's going to be on 205 Live or he's going to be on Main Event. I mean, maybe, like, I, I, dude, I have no hope for this one. I've been wrong before. I got no hope. Rhea versus Asuka. Rhea beats her clean in the middle of the ring. It's supposed to be a three-way on Sunday. Why it's a three-way, I have absolutely no idea. Oscar's and by been... the way, how they got to that, and I know we're pushing up against the break, but even how they got to that, with Sonya, look, that was a bad SNL skit. Sonya's looking around. They give a, a bunch of verbiage to Rhea that she cannot pull off and does not match who she is. Oscar was fine, but it was like... Even this is like... in Between that and Angel Garza later on with... with uh, Drew Gulak, and it's like, this is like watching Elon Musk be awkward on Saturday Night Live. This just was, like, mind-boggling to me. Damian Priest beat John Morrison. He gets to choose his tips for Sunday, so he's going to choose a Lumberjack match. And then, finally, in the main event, Drew McIntyre, who just did an interview saying that something like, I can get a match at anybody... He can, and uh, he did everything he could to try and save the show. Lashley did a good job. They had a fun match, and then, yes, Braun Strowman ran in for the DQ, and he power slammed everybody multiple times, and that's how the show went off the air. Back in a moment with your calls and more Wrestling Observer Live. The show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Like Semper Vivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Everyone's talking about vaccines in the Twitch chat here. And uh, Dagan wants to know how the uh, 5G is doing in my body after I got my uh, vaccination. Brother, let me tell you something. If my body could generate 5G wireless internet, I'd be over the moon. I can't think of anything that would be better than that. It's when I had all those problems last week at the beach. Brother, I mean, I could, that, would be, that would make my life so much easier if I could just generate 5G. I may have to go get another shot if that's an option for one of these. You ever try to use your Google Maps downtown in a city like Washington, D.C. or something like that? Yeah, as much like, you know, 5Gs I could generate to get that thing working so you don't get lost going around a corner. That would be fantastic. I use my map all the time. I never get lost. What are you talking about? You got better service than we do out here, I guess. Now, the problem, the problem, Mike, the reason you get lost. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you want to know why? Yeah, Because in Washington, D.C. Piss me off today. Because in Washington, D.C., much like in Seattle. Oh, because you know it. Yes. Brother, is it a big city or not? 
the biggest. Okay. The best. So in a city like that, where you have streets and you also have streets that go above, the the streets map cannot always figure out. Yeah, There's you know you Jetsons. You, oh, bro, you don't have uh, an off ramp or an on ramp or a, a freeway that goes above the city. That's a, there's a all that over goes the around the city. The point is, the thing can't figure out if you're up or if you're down. This happened to me a million times. You're driving over, and it thinks you're down below, and it's like, take the exit here, and you're like, I'm on the freeway. There's no exit right here. I can't turn right on Birch Avenue. I'm above. Birch Avenue's down below. That's what happens. I nothing has nothing to do with your 5G. I'd love to see you dropped in the middle of Washington, D.C. DC you're a horrible only, person. Why do you always say these places. terrible things to me? Not built like a grid. It's built in a circle, basically, which is just torturous for people that actually come for the first time and in a city full of transients to, to watch them suffer is, is always a little bit amusing. But I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about making my Google Maps experience better. And the more power that I can get from 5G, the better that would be. See, look, everyone here agreeing with me. You're absolutely right, Brian. Sometimes you're above and sometimes you're below. This guy says Brian's always above everybody. That's right. Sometimes you're in That's the That's why my maps don't work in Seattle. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.